My name is Scott Goodman. I'm an orthopedic surgeon here on the south side. And this video is uh, demonstrating my uh, in technique as far as subacromial cortisone injections. Um, I thought I would first demonstrate on our, on our shoulder model and then demonstrate uh, with Jordan. He's an athletic trainer here at uh, Ortho Indy. And so I kind of show you on the model and then we'll show you my technique on prepping the extremity and the actual uh, approach for the uh, injection. I'm gonna use this uh, anatomical model to show you kind of my approach to, to the subacromial space. And you can see here we're in the posterior part of the shoulder. Here's the spine of the scapula, the posterior lateral corner of the acromion, and the, obviously the lateral edge of the acromion. These, the muscles are, are the rotator cuff muscles, and obviously they're, they're not this thick in, in, in the real human body. And there's much more space to get into the, to the area where you need to inject. So again, I identify that posterior lateral corner. I um, first use the Marcane quarter percent without epi just for a kind of local anesthetic and produce kind of a skin uh, wheel and then inject a little bit deeper um, until you're into the subacromial space and then withdrawal. As you withdraw, then you inject as you withdraw, okay? So once you get the Marcane quarter percent without epi, then you follow up with the um, Depamedrol, and I typically use a 25 gauge needle and inject one cc of marking quarter percent without epi and one cc of Depamedrol. That's what I'm currently using. But again, the, the main anatomical location is the postlateral corner. When you place the needle in there, you, the needle is usually horizontal to the floor or the exam table, and it's done at a 45 degree angle. Obviously, if you're pointing up too superiorly, you're going to hit the acromion. No worries, just redirect it, and you should go into that soft spot. If for some reason you'd be injecting inferiorly, you're going to be hitting the humeral head. No worries, just pull it back and, and, and do it more horizontal. There's really no major nerves or arteries in this area that you would have to be concerned about if you stay in kind of close to that posterior lateral corner. Um, so that should not be a concern with you. So I'm going to show my particular technique with uh, Jordan in entering the subacromial space. And again, the first anatomical landmark is that posterior lateral corner of the acromion and then dropping down, okay? So I want to mark that area and sometimes I'll use actually my nail to feel it and once I find it or you can actually use the, the um, needle t tip and make a mark on the skin, okay? And the reason why you want to do that is you don't want to use a, a pen because when you're prepping the area it, it more than likely would just rub off. So you have your mark right there and that's the approach that we're going to use. Again, the angle of this needle will be horizontal with the floor and about 45 degrees um, into the shoulder. Okay, and again, our goal here is to enter that space right below the, that posterior lateral corner into that uh, into that space. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I, I prep. But once, so right now I have I marked the posterior lateral corner. You don't have to do that, but just I did it for this demonstration, and then march down about two centimeters. Mark it with your nail or the uh, um, injection cap. And then, um, I really don't use uh, sterile gloves. I mean, you'll have these in the, in the box there, but if you don't touch the uh, skin with these uh, gloves, um, you know, you're gonna be fine. It's gonna remain uh, sterile, okay? So the first thing that I do is I use a betadine swab, and, um, and I, the analogy is a bullseye. Here's our, you're gonna be where we're gonna be the injection. You start in the middle, and then you just work yourself out like this, okay? And then I use an, an alcohol swab to remove the betadine, but also just another way to, to sterilize the, the area, okay? And then you can still see you know you can still see the marks, so you not, haven't lost your anatomical landmarks. And then I use an ethyl chloride spray, and just kind of another way to numb up the area. All right, and then I have the injection with the Marcane, a uh, quarter percent without epi, and on a 27 gauge needle. And I'd be injecting, first starting off with a, a kind of a wheel effect on the skin and then injecting deeper with the Marcane only. And then I follow up um, with the Depamedrol, okay? And, and again, uh, don't be worried if you feel like you're hitting bone. That's actually an anatomic landmark and you can move the needle around. If you feel like you're going up too far and you hit the acromion, you just redirect it a little bit more inferior and give that space. If you feel like maybe you went down too inferior, you're going to hit the humeral head, no worries. Just pull out slightly and redirect it 
until you find that soft spot. Now, it should go in fairly easily, uh, but sometimes it's, the resistance can be real variable. That's, that's expected and that can happen. Then after, obviously after we're done doing the injection and we put a Band-Aid on, I always caution the patient that it may take five to seven days before they get relief with it. A small minority of uh, people will maybe get a steroid flare and where they have some increased pain, but it's uh, self-limiting and it goes away uh, with time after a few days. So that's my technique and uh, everyone has a different approach and as you do this, you're going to make some modifications, but I find that this is successful for me. Thanks.